Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, we did a live stream as soon as it happened because I didn't want to wait to do the video, upload it, and wait because it was great news. And for a Cowboys fan base that literally has gone through shit. Let's be clear. This has been a really bad off season, but in reality, this is not different than what typically is a Dallas Cowboys off season. We keep going through the same cycles every year. The Cowboys, they just don't believe in signing big name free agents. Now, Jerry Jones said, we're all in, you know, and he said, we're all in with our core group of players, which is Dak, CD, and Micah. And so far, he has been doing just that. And the Cowboys have done business as usual, looking at positions and filling them with players, of course, that, you know, are older players that are veterans or journeymen and things like that. Um, I had an interesting conversation during that live stream with Walker Wade. And Walker Wade's like, they're blowing it up next year. Well, and I was like, what do you mean they're blowing it up? He's like, man, they got 36 free agents next year. Their coaches aren't re-signed. To me, blowing it up means you're just getting rid of everybody and you're just starting all over. If you sign CD and you have an offensive line that's been completely rebuilt, you're not getting rid of any of those guys. But one thing that the Cowboys do, and most teams do, most teams have about 20 free agents expiring contracts every year. The Cowboys have had like 22, 26. I believe one year we had 28. So, yes, we do have a lot of expiring contracts, but this is where the Cowboys look and say, we can just rent some guys that are really, you know, inconsequential. Um, I look at it and say, we have a great core of people when you look at our offensive linemen. Now, we don't know for sure what we have with Tyler Guyton and with um, Cooper Beebe, but those are two young developing guys. And you put in there, of course, uh, Tyler Smith, you've got three young guys that you should look at and say the next 10 years. Terrence Steele has not been in for very long, and we don't know how much longer Zach Martin is, but you've got a great group there. You now have CeeDee Lamb, who has signed a four-year, $136 million, $100 million um, guaranteed, $38 million signing bonus contract. What I can't wait to see is to see the breakdown of this contract, to see what the cap hit is for this year. Because going into this, now here's where we are. Going into today before this contract was signed, the Dallas Cowboys actually had $28.4 million of cap space, which if you've been following on with the Cowboys, that's the most that they've had all off season. The reason being is, C.D. Lamb's contract, because he was suspended not showing up, did not show up on that contract. So now, the question will be is, how do they structure it? Do they look and say, let's take a piece of that money this year, hit-wise, so we don't have to worry about it next year? Because if we take Justin Jefferson, for example, and I don't know yet because we haven't seen the breakdown, but Justin Jefferson, they decided we're going to keep that first year low, in which case it's only eight and a half million. And then the next year it's 15 million. So they're saving about $9 million on the cap that they would have spent if they had kept him on the fifth year option. Now the Cowboys can do that and have $20 million of cap space this year and possibly roll it over. Or they could look at it and say, we're going to go ahead and eat 10 million of it because we're going to do that anyway and get that off the books and then make next year's price really low or the year after it lower than it had been because Justin Jefferson's was um, contract currently is eight and a half this year, um, 15 next year, and then 38. So there's all different ways of putting it out there. And a misnomer is because people think, well, Dak Prescott's getting paid 55 million a year. No, he's not. These numbers are done accounting wise because technically, Whatever C.D. Lamb's contract number this year is, he also got $38 million check when he signs that. He will be handed a check for $38 million. Now, that whole amount of money is not counted on this year. It's prorated over the four years. So that signing bonus will only count 
8.5 million, 8.5 million, and you could say your salary this year is 1 million. You see what I'm saying? And that would get you to about nine and a half million dollars for this year as your cap hit. So when you look at Dak Prescott getting 55 now, it's because he was only 17 the first year, 19 the next year, and then 26. So it's making up for all those years that it was low. So winners and losers on this. I would say getting him done now versus, say, two weeks from now gives you two weeks of time to get him ready to play. It gets him in here before we start practicing on Wednesday for the Cleveland Browns. And I think it gives the team a big boost. Um, it, I, I just don't see how it does not The loser on this one, I almost have to say, it's the Dallas Cowboys that you look at this and say, yeah, they got the contract done. But the contract is probably just like Justin Jefferson's. Who got his two months ago? Why miss training camp for your wide receiver to do a deal that's no better than anybody else's? That's where you kind of question the Cowboys that seem to keep hamstringing themselves when it comes to contracts. Either way, it's a done deal. Now, we can move on to the Dak Prescott contract. Um, they've been talking to Dak Prescott basically every other day or every couple of days or so. Now that you got C.D. Lamb out of there, now that you got some certainty in knowing what he's going to cost you, they'll probably focus now on trying to get Dak done over the course of the next two weeks. And I would expect to see that done and out of here so maybe we can start focusing in on the season. I honestly would like to get it done just so we don't have the distraction of it going into the season. I know people will say, you know, Dak is whack. We need to get rid of him, move on and stuff. But you don't sign CD, you know, for the next four years at record-breaking numbers and then start all over with a quarterback. You, you just don't. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm not sure I'm ready to turn the, the team over to Cooper Rush as your full-time starter or Trey Lance or hope that you can um, get one of the top quarterbacks next year. That um, sounds great in fantasy football that you just trade them, just trade them. Um, but it doesn't work out that way. So good news for the Cowboys. Um, we've got all of the uh, – or we, I'm uploading a – video with all of the current cuts that we've made so far and um you know it's always a sad day uh when you get to know some of these guys you know they become fan favorites and they end up getting cut it's just hard um hopefully they'll catch on with other teams and so forth all right good people i appreciate you and i'll see you soon peace